Let's give a big round of applause to the Morgan State University Jazz Ensemble. I don't know if I could be more excited, but let me just first begin by saying good afternoon and welcome. Thank you all for being here. I am so excited to kick off today's celebration of the first graduates from Goldman Sachs 10,000 small businesses here in Baltimore. I just want to say to our graduates, you have so much to be proud of. You represent 59 business cases for why there is no better place for this program than in our city of Baltimore. What an honor and highlight of my time thus far as a mayor to have visionaries like Lloyd Blankfein, Michael Bloomberg, Warren Buffett, and Dr. Michael Porter right here supporting these great small businesses, but also advocating for the city of Baltimore. The dedication and commitment of the leaders on this stage here today are proof that Baltimore is a great investment. And speaking of investments, I am honored to announce that Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses is making a $10 million co-investment with Bloomberg Philanthropies to continue this program in Baltimore City. What an endorsement, what an endorsement of the change underway in Baltimore and the power of our small business community. What Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business does best is convene national and local stakeholders. From day one, they worked side by side with Bloomberg Philanthropies. And today, they're extending their partnership to include some of our city and region's best institutions. I would like to recognize Johns Hopkins University, Morgan State University, the Community College of Baltimore County, and the Annie E. Casey Foundation for, they, for the role that they will play in delivering the program here in Baltimore City. We know that Baltimore residents are ready for change and eager for opportunity. And the future is now brighter for our citizens, thanks to the resources like 10,000 small businesses. The program is a proven model for providing business owners with the tools they need to succeed through access to business education, capital, which many have talked about and have struggled to have access to, and to support their services. Though we have already made great strides to build Baltimore's economy, we have our sleeves rolled up, ready to do the work that lies ahead. And I know that thriving small businesses will be vital to our city's economy. This investment is making it easier for Baltimore's small businesses to grow and create jobs, which in turn will strengthen our local economy and cement our city's future. So once again, thank you all. Thank you as individuals who have made this possible, but most of all, I want to thank the businesses behind me. It is your hard work that contributes to the economic fiber of our city. I want to congratulate all of our graduates and your families, because you know you don't get here by yourself. Thank you for taking time to enrich yourselves through this program. And lastly, let me urge every eligible small business owner from across the state to visit 10ksbapply.com. Let me repeat that, 10ksbapply, because I don't want you all to make any mistakes, .com, to apply to this program and take advantage, please take advantage of this golden opportunity. In doing so, you will be able to tell your stories like some of the small business owners in this short video. And now for the video. 
When you're an entrepreneur, when you're an owner, it's really not about you. It's about what you can do for other people. Having 70 people working for you, you're not talking 70 people, to be honest. You're talking 70 people with families. percentage of our businesses in our city and our communities are small businesses and with the Goldman Sachs 10,000 small business program we can move our city forward. The Goldman Sachs 10,000 small businesses program uh, really is a terrific opportunity for small businesses in Maryland to learn how to become bigger businesses and more successful. a guy that went to college. I'm a guy that was out there working in the field as a carpenter. Mahogany is my architectural millwork firm in Baltimore. We had kind of got to a point where we could not move further. We had been at that 12 to $15 million range for years, and it's like, man, what do we have to do to get to 20 million or 25 million? Even after 26 years of being in business, we weren't looking at Mahogany like it was a major corporation. Sometimes you need other people to tell you and that's what Goldman Sachs did for me that really helped me to just stand back and look and learn how to really evaluate your business, determine your business net worth, and find the right people so that we can really manage this like it's a major company. After the Goldman Sachs class, hey man, we've raised our goals to 100 million. It's got me thinking national. I also want to give back to the city that I'm from. Mahogany has done so much to change Baltimore, and that's just the start. I started a small business today. It's a big one. 10,000 small businesses and really helps entrepreneurs in America. That's what boosts the economy. Our guiding principle in this country is, is equality of opportunity, and, and 10,000 small businesses is a big part of that. Higher Ground Transportation is a company that I started because I wanted to provide transportation for all people of all abilities and are in areas where there may not be great public transportation. We have people that we transport every day. They're like family. But the biggest challenge for me was trying to find new business. The Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program just blew me away. The small business advisors helped me to really think through our opportunity growth plan. And since I finished the class, I've identified a new business opportunity just by purchasing these special car seats, adding them to the buses I already have. I could expand my business exponentially. The connections through your fellow scholars are definitely worth it because in Baltimore, people call it small -tomore. Usually, we'll find somebody that we both know. After the program, I'm mentoring and coaching my drivers and my team to always reach higher. When I hear small business people describe their business opportunity, their commitment, I feel very, very secure that the American dream is secure for another generation.
It is now my honor and my privilege to introduce Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Advisory Council co-chair and chairman and CEO of Goldman Sachs, Lloyd Blankfein. Please welcome him. That's a lot of titles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure which I'm most proud of, but at this moment, it sure is the uh, co-chair of the 10,000 Small Business Program, that's for sure. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor Pugh, for your support of 10,000 small businesses and for your leadership in Baltimore. Our commitment here, and obviously our increased commitment of $10 million, which is joint with the Bloomberg Philanthropies, uh, wouldn't be being made if we didn't have the support of the political leadership here, and the political local politi uh, political leadership is you. So thank you very much. I also want to thank uh, Governor uh, Larry Hogan, um, also, our local and national partners and members of the 10,000 Small Business Advisory Council for being here and uh, supporting this program. Now, we created 10,000 small businesses to fuel local economies by giving small businesses the tools to grow and create jobs. And I'll say, and we, we just we just had sessions with some of the small business people, and you'll meet some of them again, and of course, it's family and friends, you know them. Um, we didn't create their drive, their ambition, their brilliance. Um, I like to, you know, in some ways, we may have peeled off a little bit of a layer that, that shielded it, uh, but the drive that they have is clear, and what really has been effective for us is the entrepreneurial education um, that really has allowed them to have this opportunity to, you know, break through. All these people have been successful. They're all in business. Uh, they all have good businesses. Um, but stymied in some way or growing slower than they otherwise could, to give them the tools and the impetus to break out and to increase their business and expand uh, and to um, hire more people and to, uh, and to make their contribution to uh, Baltimore's renaissance. We're also incredibly fortunate uh, to have support of Mike Bloomberg LP, to Mike Bloomberg Philanthropies, um, and Mike Bloomberg the Human. Um, <laughs> who's been with this program as a co-chair um, um, really along the way through a number of cities and comes to these events and, and, and participates in mentorship uh, programs firsthand. Uh, I would say for him and for my other, one of my other co-chairmen, Warren Buffett, um, they're not doing it for the money. <laughs> not, neither of them are doing it for the money, so they're clearly doing it for the satisfaction and for the investment return they're getting in terms of, this, uh, in terms of that satisfaction. Um, we wouldn't be here, again, implementing these programs unless we had the support of local institutions, Johns Hopkins University, Morgan State University, the Community College of Baltimore County, and the Annie E. Casey Foundation. So thank you all. And to the graduates, your proof that we made a great investment. I can tell you proof. I sampled it myself. Uh, lunch today, brown rice Korean grill. Um, the owner, Heather Chung, who's here. I'm very particular. It was spectacular. You should all go run right from here and go down there and have a bowl of rice. And I know how you'll get there. We provide transportation. You saw that in the video. I'd say Heather uh, opened her fourth store and is close to opening a fifth. I think she's working her way up the seaboard, and we'll see her in New York soon. Um, if you read the newspapers every day, you don't always feel so optimistic. Uh, it's hard to make progress, too many obstacles. Uh, all businesses have obstacles, but these obstacles weigh much more heavily on small businesses who don't have the human resource department or the department that deals with regulation or the department that deals with the 
government and licensing and all these things. It's just small business and people have to do things themselves. But what, what distinguishes small business people around the country and in Baltimore and certainly these people behind me is they are relentless in achieving their goals uh, to maximize the individual and collective potential. And I say collective because everyone here cares about his neighbors, his fellow citizens, the environment, the city. Um, businesses here today remind us that the core of this country, despite what you might read from time to time, is very much alive and we can unleash the power of small business even more. That impact will go well beyond the effect of any one individual or any one co uh, community. Uh, again, this group is going to be in the vanguard of Baltimore's resurgence that's already occurring. Uh, and we continue to be impressed by your accomplishments today. And I also want to thank the members of this audience, friends and families of the graduates. And I know what they're thinking. Uh, they wouldn't be here accomplishing this if they didn't have your support. So now it's my pleasure uh, to welcome my fellow Advisory Council co-chair, the 108th Mayor of New York, the founder and CEO of Bloomberg LP, and my friend Michael Bloomberg. Well, Lloyd, thank you for uh, pointing out that uh, your two co-chairs are here. I might point out that both of your two co-chairs have more hair than you do. <laughs> Anyways, it's great to be here in Baltimore, a city that uh, is close to my heart. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, I have a connection to Baltimore. It started in September of 1960 when I matriculated at Johns Hopkins University. Uh, they did give me a degree four years later. Uh, but for the record, I was one of those people that always made the top half of the class possible. <laughs> However, in business, that's not a good idea. Uh, and there are no rankings today, so all of you, particularly people behind me, are in the top half of their class. And so let me first say congratulations to all of you that are graduating. Uh, being part of a successful, being a successful entrepreneur, I know it's time to step back every once in a while, away from the craziness, and just identify ways that you can keep improving your business and uh, participate in all the things that will let you have the skill sets and the advice and the comfort that you need to build a business. I've been in your shoes. Uh, I remember starting back in 1981, my company, after I got fired from Solomon Brothers. It, I did. Uh, thank God you should get fired the same way. It did turn out okay. Um, when I, my first day it was me, the second day was almost as good as the first day, then I was up to four employees, uh, but uh, my first day I went out and I got two important things, a small refrigerator for the milk and a coffee pot so that I could get through the day. Uh, but since then we've grown to 20,000 employees and we did it by um, building a product that uh, using, used technology that didn't really exist. People kept telling me that I was crazy to do it, and maybe they were right, but if I had listened to them, I wouldn't be standing here with you today. And the advice I can give to all of you is if you have a dream, you just got to go for it. Now, there's a point at which you have to say, enough, it's not working, let's go on to the next thing, but I'd stretch it out before I got to that point, because a lot of times, just before you turn that last corner is the time that you really get depressed and just think of what would happen if you hadn't gone around that corner. Um, many of you will tell me that, uh, will tell you that you're crazy. Uh, you have to be a little crazy to invest the amount of time and energy that it takes to start a new business. You have to put in long hours and give weekends up, uh, and no, no more time with the family. Uh, you have to take financial risks. Uh, but building something from the ground up really is uh, one of the most rewarding things that you can ever do. And every day it's an opportunity to experiment, and every day it's an opportunity to try new things. And every day all of you are helping to build a strong future for your company, but even more important for this city, this state, and this country and the world. Small businesses are where most of us will get our opportunity to really participate in the, make, in the great American dream. And I just can't urge you all enough to understand that. We have to create jobs in this country for people that want to go out and work hard. 
And it is a society where the harder you work, the luckier you get. The luckier you get, the more likely you are to do it well. Uh, this is not a good country uh, for to put your feet up and expect to get a handout. But this is a country where we can give you a hand up. And that's what uh, Goldman Sachs' 10,000 small businesses is trying to do. And we should do everything that we can to help each other grow. And that's why Bloomberg Philanthropies is extending our support for the 10,000 small businesses program here in Baltimore for another five years. And I want to say that the team at Goldman Sachs deserves a lot of credit for the program's success, particularly Lloyd Blankfein, because it always starts at the top, but also John Rogers, Catherine Jolan, and Jessica Taylor. And I'm pleased to serve on the board as a co-chair with Warren Buffett, somebody that everybody knows his name. But just let me tell you something. This guy has a heart. He's a tough guy, but he understands what makes people work, and he he promotes people, and he helps people, and he devotes an awful lot of his time and virtually all his money to helping the rest of the world. So, Warren, I just wanted to say thank you for you. I don't know how many people here. Now, also, uh, Mayor Pugh and Governor Hogan uh, and Morris Offit, who has, have provided, Morris has provided some financial support. He was chairman of the board before uh, I was at Johns Hopkins and made an enormous difference to that university and to this city. Uh, Alphonse Sheik, Morgan Davis, and Laura Sabatier and the Hopkins team, and Anna Don and Donello from Babson College. I want to thank them for providing invaluable assistance. And before I turn the floor over to the next speaker, I just want to leave you with a few quick pieces of advice. First, luck plays a role in anyone's business success. And the harder you work, the luckier you get. Second, never be content and keep improving your product or some other company will do that. And third, hire people smarter than you. My test is always are they smarter than me? Those are the people that I want to have come in. If I'm the smartest person in the room, there's something wrong. And last, and this is the most important piece of advice, always get your business news from Bloomberg. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you for being such a role model to small business owners like myself. Hello, I'm Jasmine Sims. I'm the owner and CEO of Scrub Nail Boutique here in Baltimore. We've been voted Baltimore's best, and we're also the only nail salon that offers an unlimited manicure membership. Although we have big clients now, like Under Armour and PayPal, my journey in entrepreneurship has not been easy. I've been through the fire, literally, and I started my business with few resources and no experience in running a business. Five years ago, while I was pregnant with my first daughter, I suffered a fire at my home in Charles Village, which left me living in a hotel without any possessions and just weeks away from my due date. One day while I was complaining about work, I decided it was time that I should bet on myself. So I did my research. I wrote a business plan, and a year later, with my baby on my hip, I opened my nail salon. <laughs> After four years of operating scrub on trial and error alone, I struggled to keep my business open. But I knew I couldn't fail, and not just because I invested everything I had into my business, but for women who come from neighborhoods like Santan, where I came from. So I co-founded Moms as Entrepreneurs with my partner, and we committed to using our business struggles to help women become successful in their own businesses. And in the past year, we've helped open 27 mom-owned businesses here in Baltimore City. <laughs> Knowing how to turn my business challenges and into opportunities is what comes from the grit of Baltimore City. Having that determination to make it, that comes from the grit of Baltimore City. But learning how to turn my business risks and opportunities and assess those together, I learned that from the 10,000 Small Businesses Program. The program taught me to see the full potential of my business, that I don't just own a nail salon, but I own the CrossFit of nail salons. <laughs> See, but the key 
to making your business a reality is resilience. Because during the last week of the program, my business caught fire on Easter Sunday. And there I was again, pregnant, <laughs> dealing with the aftermath of another fire. And if I've learned nothing else, I shouldn't have any more children <laughs> because something is going to catch fire. But before any word got out about what happened over the weekend, my classmates had already pulled together their resources to help me through one of the most difficult challenges my business has ever had to face. Before this program, a setback like this could have ruined me and my business. But because I was taught how to craft my growth plan, I now know how to pivot and turn even the most severe challenges into a way forward. So Scrub Nail Boutique is now on track to still hire four new employees in open locations across the city. And that's just the beginning. See, giving small businesses the opportunity to grow is what helps create thriving communities in this city. And I'm so grateful to have been a part of that growth as in the, of the first cohort <laughs> of the 10,000 Small Business Program in Baltimore. So congratulations to all my fellow classmates and now friends. We've earned it. It is now my privilege. I'm going to introduce Governor Larry Hogan. Thank you for boosting the state's economy and supporting small businesses. Please help me welcome him. Wow. Wow. Thank you very, very much. Good afternoon. How about Jasmine? How about, isn't she incredible? Congratulations. She, uh, I understand why they uh, selected her to speak for the class, but I, I don't understand why they made me follow her. Because she's the one tough act to follow, but uh, wonderful job. Um, that's an incredible story. I just want to say good afternoon and thank you all for being here. Uh, it's an honor to be here with uh, Mayor Pugh and Mayor Bl um, Bloomberg and uh, Mr. Blankfein, Mr. Buffett, um, our distinguished leaders of our universities and colleges, and with all of you, uh, thank you all for being here as we congratulate our Baltimore City graduates of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program. Um, it's uh, small business creators like this that really uh, are driving our economic resurgence here in Maryland. And I want to sincerely thank uh, not only all the folks right here, but Dr. Michael Porter and the 10,000 Small Business Advisory Council, especially uh, Goldman Sachs and uh, Bloomberg uh, Philanthropies for their generous contributions. Ten million dollars, that's something worth cheering for again, don't you think, guys? Thank you so much. Generous. I just want to say thank you for believing in Baltimore City and for choosing to invest that money in the revitalization of this great city. But most importantly today, what I really want to do is congratulate each and every one of our graduates today. Uh, these guys, you're going to cheer them again and again, but one more big round of applause for every single one of our graduates. We're very proud of all of you. You know, our team here in Maryland, we've been working really hard and we've been focused on restoring our economy so that we can help small businesses grow and we can put more of our citizens to work. And we've made some real progress. Uh, last year was our best year for business in Maryland in 15 years. It was our best year for job growth in more than a decade. Uh, we went from losing 100,000 jobs to gaining 107,000 jobs. And our unemployment rate dropped to 4.1%. Uh, The uh, 2014 Maryland's overall economic performance sadly ranked 49th out of 50 states. Um, and I'm just pleased to report to you that in just two and a half years, Maryland has moved from 49th to number seven in the United States of America. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's the greatest economic turnaround of any state in America and small businesses have really been the key 
to turning that economy around. They are the reason for our success. They're the backbone of our economy. They account for 95 percent of all the businesses in our state, and they're providing much of that job growth. So now, with Goldman Sachs and Bloomberg uh, Philanthropies, they're here helping to continue that progress right here in Baltimore City. Um, this 10,000 small businesses program already has a proven track record of success all across the country. And I know that uh, by combining, uh, if you take the combined uh, brain power here, Warren Buffett, Michael Bloomberg, you know, uh, Goldman Sachs, they're all pretty savvy investors, right? And uh, they decided to invest here in Baltimore. You put all that together with the uh, drive and the determination of these Baltimore City entrepreneurs behind me, and there's no question in my mind that this program is going to be a huge success right here in Baltimore City. Uh, today, we're going to celebrate this first class uh, of small business graduates, but through this program, hundreds of Baltimore small business owners are going to have the opportunity uh, to receive mentoring and a world-class education, uh, access to capital, along with the hope and the opportunity that they need to succeed. Uh, so I just want to, again, congratulate every single one of our graduates. I want to thank everybody who had anything to do with making today possible. And at this time, in order to begin conferring some of the diplomas, I'm going to turn the mic over to the great president of Johns Hopkins University, Ron Daniels. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Governor Hogan, for your words and for your support for small businesses in Baltimore and indeed in the state of Maryland. As president of Johns Hopkins University and on behalf of the entire Johns Hopkins community, it has been a privilege to be able to host this session. The class of Goldman Sachs 10,000 small business graduates exemplifies the persistence, the optimism, the grit, the determination, the vision, and the creativity that Baltimore so naturally breeds. Now, as we all know well, Mike Bloomberg has had a few good ideas about Johns Hopkins and about the impact of his alma mater globally and locally. And when he reached out to us about this program, we did not hesitate a moment to seize the opportunity and are truly, truly proud to be inaugural partner. Indeed, we are thrilled that 10,000 small businesses is now part of our city's landscape for economic development. This program is rooted in a number of partnerships that have been alluded to before, and we're fortunate to be able to work beside two exceptional partners, Morgan State University and President David Wilson and the Community College of Baltimore County, President Sandra Curtinitis. Now, I'm going to call them up here and, uh, to join me on the stage as we begin conferring certificates. But before we do that, I just want to say something to the graduates that are behind me. You have been appropriately lauded, celebrated for the many uh, contributions you have made already to the city of Baltimore and for the contributions we know that you will make. And we're so excited and proud uh, to be able to uh, bask in the glow of your many achievements. So that's all important, but I just want to say on behalf of David and Sandra and myself, as university leaders, we'd like to thank you for something else. This is a nice graduation for us to be at when we're celebrating students who have caused us no difficulty whatsoever in fraternity <laughs> and sorority hazings. You have, you have to my knowledge, never protested us, nor have you occupied our offices. And remarkably, when your family and friends and when we say to you, what are you going to do on graduation, you don't have that kind of vacant stare. You know exactly what you're going to do for the city. This is a very special graduation for us to be part of for that reason as well. Sandra and David. David, you're going to confer the names. And I'd ask other members that are on the stage who have been designated to join me so that we can congratulate the graduates. Hmm. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, President Daniels. Uh, like Johns Hopkins and the Community College of Baltimore County, Morgan State University is indeed honored to be a Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Partner. And now, the moment you've been waiting for. Thank you, President Cotonitis, and congratulations to my fellow graduates. We earned it. My name is Funlaya Alabi, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Shea Radiance. My story, like that of many of my fellow graduates, is about the struggle and triumph of gaining accesses to resources so we can have a positive impact on our communities. My business was born out of a family problem. Our boys had dry, eczema-prone skin, and nothing we bought from the stores worked. One of my sons, Tolua, is here with me today. Tolua, where are you? Hey. <laughs> Being originally from West Africa and rem remembering the healing power of shea butter, I asked my mom to bring some on her next visit to the U.S. You know, mother really does best because after sh she brought the shea butter to us and we used it on his skin for about a week, the inflammation went down, and that's how my business was born. So we went back to northern Nigeria, where we developed a connection with the amazing women who process shea, butter, shea nuts into shea butter. We saw how hard they worked, and in spite of all the natural abundance that surrounded them, they lived in poverty, poverty in the midst of abundance. What they lacked was access access to the right partners who would buy their product at a fair price so they could provide for their families. As we've sought to expand our manufacturing capabilities here in the United States, we've seen that same need. There's tremendous opportunity right here in Baltimore to expand access, create new jobs, provide skills and training. I knew that if we did our part to make Shea Radiance a success, we could help our partners, not only in West Africa, but right here where we live in Baltimore City. Here are four reasons for you to bet on us. We have great products. We have amazing customers. We made a promise to the great women of West Africa. But most of all, we are committed to creating great manufacturing jobs right here in Baltimore. The 10,000 Small Business Program has given me access. Access to the right connections, access to potential sources of capital, and access to sound business knowledge. As I grow my business and set my sights on bringing quality natural products to luxury channels like Nordstrom and Sephora, I carry these women with me because my success creates access for them. As a manufacturing business, we have a need for the wide variety of skills and talents that Baltimore City has to offer. The time is now to join the vibrant, growing maker community here in Baltimore. Mayor Pugh, I know we spoke earlier on. <laughs> yeah, you promised. <laughs> we, yes. We want to make Baltimore our manufacturing hub, and we would love your help in finding a 4,000 square foot manufacturing space <laughs> to make it happen. <laughs> we believe in this city, we really do. The Goldman Sachs has given me the tools to add value to our local economy, and we are ecstatic about the future. Now, it's my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Warren Buffett is the chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. He's also one of the co-chairs of 10,000 Small Business Advisory Group. In my humble opinion, he is the patron saint for small businesses. A true American entrepreneur 
and an inspiration to all 59 businesses represented here today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Warren Buffett. Thank you. I've always been very, very, very optimistic about America, but uh, when you meet the superstars that I've met in the last few hours, uh, you just can't help being that way. I'm going to elaborate on that in just a minute, but there's one thing I would like to do. There is another group of superstars we really haven't given sufficient recognition to so far in this program, because when the graduates committed to spend their Saturdays, spend their... Uh, attending classes, spend their weekdays working at their businesses and at the same time working on on the problems that they were going to address when they had their sessions. Uh, they need the cooperation, they need the encouragement, they need the help of the people that stand them behind them and who are in this audience. So here we have the spouses, the parents, the siblings, the children uh, who have also helped earn that degree that these people have uh, achieved. And I know on their behalf, certainly on our, my behalf, I'd like to give you all a hand. <laughs> you ought to stand up. <laughs> Cure yourself. I know how important that is. I mean, if you're working 50 or 60 hours a week at your job, the difference between having support and criticism or dissension or anything is night and day. And uh, so don't ever underestimate your importance, not only the su success of, of getting your child or partner or parent or, or brother or sister here, uh, but what you can do for them in the future. Their success will be tied to your support. Uh, uh, it's been, uh, it's really been quite a day. I, I have sort of an ulterior motive in joining this group. Uh, uh, I'm going to be 87 in a few weeks. And, and, <laughs> for decades, I've been buying small businesses after they become big. So I pay hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> 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 It occurred to me, you know, I've got to get these people earlier, you know. <laughs> we, uh, we've had multiple businesses at Berkshire we bought that have been started with just a few thousand dollars. We, have, we had two companies. Uh, one was started, both were started, uh, one was $2,500, one was with $3,000. But one of them was started by a woman I bought out when she was 89. She continued to work until she was 103. Uh, I'm not an easy guy to work for. <laughs> uh, but she, uh, she came to this country. She landed in Seattle in 1915. She couldn't speak any English. She had a tag around her neck. It said Fort Dodge, Iowa. The Red Cross got her out to Fort Dodge. She lived two years there. And she, she said she felt like a dummy, that was a word she used all the time, because she couldn't pick up the language. So she moved to Omaha because there were Russian Jews in Omaha and she, and she would be able to have someone to talk to. So she went to Omaha. Her oldest daughter taught her the words she learned in school when she came home every day. That's how this woman, Mrs. B, they called her, Rose Blumpkin. Uh, and it took her roughly 20 years to save $2,500 to start her business. In the meantime, she brought seven siblings and her parents over $50 at a time. She sold used clothing. She started the business in 1937 with $2,500. There's been no more money put in, and that company does over a billion and a half of business now. It has the three largest home furnishing stores in the, in, in the country. And the punchline is, she never went to school a day in her life. She couldn't read or write, but she knew how to take care of her customers. So this woman, Rose Blumpkin, turned a tag on her neck in Seattle 
into the three largest stores, each of which does around $500 million annually. And she had one motto, which she couldn't actually read in her, in her uh, little office, but it said on it, sell cheap and tell the truth. And uh, I wish I'd gotten to her when she only had $2,500. <laughs> I paid her a lot of money for the business. But the, it, this country is incredible. I mean, if you think about it, if you put three of me end to end, not that I'm suggesting that, but if you put three of me end to end at 87, it's 20 years before Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. Three lifetimes like mine, and you've transformed a prairie land, basically. Nothing was here into $92 trillion. That's the most recent estimate of American wealth from nothing. Now, we went millennia where nothing really happened to people, and yet we found a system that unlocked human potential. And the good news is the game has just started. When you look at the people behind me, you know, they have been unlocking their potential, you know, in some cases for many years, in some cases very recently, but, they've, but they're not satisfied with where they've gotten. They want to keep moving forward, and this country gives them the, the opportunity to do so. Coming through the line, I'd never met him before, a young man shook my hand, and he said he lived four blocks away from me in Omaha. Uh, maybe he could raise his hand. Uh, that, uh, uh, I live in a upper middle class neighborhood. It's a little higher middle class because I live in it in terms of the average income. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the kids all go to public school in the neighborhood. They don't automatically get cars when they're 16 or anything of the sort. It's, it's, it's upper middle class. Every person in that neighborhood is living better than John D. Rockefeller Sr. lived when I was born in 1930. Think of that, in medicine, in education, entertainment, in travel, you name it, they are in a better position in life, essentially, than he was in the year I was born. That's in one person's lifetime. And the game is, the game is just starting. So anytime you hear anybody say, you know, that your children aren't gonna live better than you do or your children's children and so on, it's ridiculous. And the reason is exemplified by these people behind me. They, they, have, they are opening up their potential and they haven't reached it yet. They're gonna, and, they, and they'll never reach full potential, but they'll keep striving and striving and striving. And that's why we are living literally in a very high percentage of the cases better than the richest man in the world lived at the time of my birth. So we have a wonderful system this country, it, we haven't lost the magic touch. The formula's still there. And I just applaud these people that are taking advantage of that. I hope they sell me their business prematurely. <laughs> that, uh, anything you can do to convince them to take me in as a partner, you know, <laughs> do your part and you'll finder's fee will come your way. Uh, <laughs> and I, uh, we now have, I think it's 5,800 people, 99% of the people who have, who have elected to improve themselves by this further education, 99% finished the course. The record is astounding in terms of how many are employing more people six months later and the improvement of their own financial condition. But that's America, folks. I mean, people want to better themselves. We all want to help each other in doing that. The governor talks about going from 49th to 7th in a very short period of time. I mean, Americans can do anything if they set their mind to it. And you're looking at Exhibit 1, and I rest my case. Thank you. Um, Mr. Buffett, thank you so much for inspiring so many of us. And let me just say to our partners, Goldman Sachs and Bloomberg Philanthropies,
Baltimore is on the move. We are so excited about this investment. We're really excited about the entrepreneurship opportunities that are in front of us. Let me take a moment and acknowledge the president of city council who is with us, Jack Young, our vice president of city council, uh, Madam Middleton, and also city councilman Schleifer for being with us. But I just want you all to know that as we continue to work together, we will grow our city. We will be the greatest city in America. Thank you all for being here, and thank you all. Thank you.